before I was in Romania. EU rules allow migrants posted to Britain for less than two years to pay national insurance and, in certain cases, income tax in their own country. The basic tax rates are at a much lower rate at the migrants' home countries and almost 100,000 EU immigrants are already in the UK, benefiting from the regulations. In Bulgaria, the flat rate on tax is 10% and in Romania, 16% of earnings compared to the basic UK rate of 20% tax and 12% national insurance. EU migrants working in the UK but paying tax elsewhere are still entitled to some free health care along with housing and child benefits. Now, it's easy to take a protectionist point of view here, which immediately leads to a default position of blaming the individuals. But sociologists would see that the situation is vastly more complex. Think for a moment what is the most likely section of the communities in Romania and Bulgaria to pack up and ship out. Well, almost without exception, the greatest majority are those with capabilities and skills, either migrating as a family to find work as a unit, as an individual family member looking to support a family back home, or the young single people with skills who wish to find a better life. Now, I don't watch very much television, but last night I happened to watch a documentary, Benefit Street. In last night's episode, it tracked the plight of a group of 14 Romanian men, average ages of around 30, brought to the UK on a lorry with the promise of regular but low-paid work, that promise being £40 for eight hours' work. Now, what happened in reality was they were exploited and trapped. Their so-called boss took their passports as part of the contract, then worked them for 17 hours a day, paying them just £10 for that work, apparently saying he had to deduct fees to pay for their contract. Now, cases such as these, whilst still numerous, are but the fringe of the problem. The biggest problem is the destruction of cultural, stable communities. Now, I first saw this problem when I was running a company here in the southwest and got to meet a lovely gentleman by the name of Hugh Scudder from a charity called Christian Response to Eastern Europe. In short, during the collapse of the Soviet Union, the small principality of Moldova met with deep and prolonged economic collapse. Now, what is happening across Europe today happened there before. However, once the central pillar of the community left, then the social fabric collapsed too. What was left in Moldova were the elderly, the sick and the children, thousands of orphaned children. No schools, and why? Because there were no teachers, no maintained buildings, and you guessed it, no builders. Our kleptocrat buffoons in their centrally heated offices in Brussels with on-site leisure facilities and yes ma'am, no ma'am, three bags full ma'am, parliamentarian assistance, think that their policies and Schengen agreements are for the greater good of the people. But they are not. Many people would crow conspiracy, but I genuinely believe it to be a wholesale cock-up. When you think for a moment, it is easy to see how the politicians would measure the wealth of a people by monetary reckoning. But family, friendships and community are not built with money. They're built from love. There is nothing wrong with adversity and no greater feeling of worth than to struggle and triumph together in the face of hardship. Look at the communities and hard-forged relationships built here in Britain post-war, where even in the big cities everyone knew everyone else up and down the street. People could leave their doors unlocked. Those societies and communities were largely self-regulating. The people were welcoming, friends, families and communities were united and strong and together we rebuilt Britain when she was all but destroyed. So you can take either side of the argument, the liberal doors wide open, eyes wide shut, or you can take the UKIP eyes wide open, doors closed shut approach to this issue. But each of those comes with its own unique set of problems. Perhaps the answer is a change of thinking. What if government stopped trying to treat people like dependent children and instead focused on enablement and empowerment? If it built upon community, social justice, independence and self-reliance, that would mean less government, more power divested back to the people. The socio-economic policies of the European Union have failed. 
Many of the member states' economies have been destroyed. The debt burden is spiralling out of control and the kleptocrats are running up and down in the corridors of Brussels like the late hare from Alice in Wonderland with no clue what to do except chirp, recovery, I'm late, recovery, I'm late.